We've known each other for a long time, uh, and we had collaborated before on a couple of pieces, a piece, uh, performance piece that Sean conceived of. Uh, he got me involved, which was a boxing match at the ICA as a part of their, what was it called, Autumn Exhibitionist. And then that kind of led on to getting Sean involved in some of the pieces I was doing, and eventually that just led to a full-time collaboration. And Sean just has a different, slightly different way of seeing. So that's, that's good. If I make a sculpture or s start off with an idea, Sean will look at it and... I don't know. I don't know whether it's... Uh, it's not in a two-dimensional way, but it will look at things slightly differently. Initially, people think that, you know, it's, it's us abusing an image of Jesus, but that's, that's, that's from a medieval image called... Um, the Sunday Christ or the Handyman, and initially it was him. They were frescoes in churches. There'd be a figure of Jesus with lots of tools impaled in him. And the message was to the illiterate churchgoers not to work on the Sabbath, to keep the Sabbath holy, because your labours will hurt him. So that was the direct message of the piece. And so we've just transposed that into a different medium and left it exactly as it is. And you, you know that that's, that's the... Uh, it's a sort of contemporary version of that. Christ of the Artisans, I think the actual piece is called, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Like that, yeah. With, with yeah. this, I mean, obviously, we sourced the tools, we made the bust using a polystyrene core with uh, clay over the top, and Sean made the mould and made the wax, then the wax is sent off to the foundry. So we do make the actual figure, but obviously we haven't got a bronze foundry in the, <laughs> in the studio, so... It's important to, to think of the, the, the space where the sculpture is going to be there. It has to have a physical presence there. Yeah, and also techniques to making a small piece is totally different to making a large piece. I mean, we did three different scale versions of uh, Homo Tesco, and obviously the bigger piece, which is out in Holland, it was at 12 foot high, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That was made out of polystyrene and steel. And, and resin. The piece that's in there is just a life-size skeleton, you know, a plastic skeleton bought off the internet, a medical skeleton which has been chopped and changed. And then we did the, the little bronze, so again every, every technique going from that to that is, is different because the materials are totally different. Uh, and the, the outcome's different, I think. The bigger one seemed to be a, a more cartoony in a way, didn't it? The size kind of... We didn't want to just enlarge the small one. We wanted to make each piece a, a different sculpture. So working with scale and materials, it kind of dictates, um, dictates sometimes how the piece is going to look. If you can find what you need in, in a skip or some builders are throwing away and, and it's free, it's just <laughs> ideal, isn't it? And, we can't really leave that gift? totally behind, can we? No, so we're always yeah. pulling something out of a skip. There's a real joy of finding yeah. something on the street that's interesting that you don't get from going to Travis Perkins. <laughs> but of course, we use the internet for various things, you know, trawling the internet for dog chew wholesalers and, you know, all sorts of eBay. Uh, <clears throat> and the commercial jobs that we've done in the past put us into contact with the um, trade suppliers to so the, the museum fabrication place put us onto the um, people who made the polystyrene yeah. and the resin and the acrylic resin and things like that. I think in the past we've been drawn to a particular sort of shoddy second-hand aesthetic you know, by finding materials that were second-hand that already had a history. I mean, all materials have a history. If you buy some timber from the timber yard, it's come from the forest somewhere and been transported there. But finding second-hand materials already having a history was sparks a lot of ideas in it because they have a political content or a social content before you even start using them and we find that quite exciting and that aesthetic carries through into the other pieces. It's kind of exciting trying to change the, the history of a found object and trying to make it work in a different way. Yeah. yeah. That's what's quite, if you can achieve that it's quite, it's quite interesting. But yeah I think, I mean that's quite floating. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all. I think someone described their work as being quite sort of, you know, manly and lumpen. But but that, I don't not, think so. I don't think so. No. This is the studio in Martello Street. Uh, it's always a bit, bit messy, especially when we're in the middle of doing 
work for a specific show. You can see in here, just past all the other stuff, these are lamps, lamp stands made out of dog bones. Uh, these have got to be reconstructed. And this, when it's, <laughs> it's, just, it's going to be a, a chandelier covered in dog bones. This piece is also a part of the uh, installation. And they're, they're two elephant heads, skulls made from memory. Sean made one and I made one and we brought them together to make some kind of weird hybrid. Of course, elephants have got meant to have extremely good memory, so it was, that was the initial idea for that. But it's odd, because elements of Sean's elements of mine, if you actually made one sculpture out of it, it would probably be quite a good representation of an elephant skull. Mally and I, when we left college, we, you know, we needed some money, so we moved into, we got, we got work where we could apply the skills that we'd learn at college. And for a while we both worked for a company fabricating museum displays, which was enormously useful to learn new skills, like poly carving and painting, painting sculptures and, and scenic work and moulding and casting things. And I got a job at Madame Tussauds and was moulding and casting there, doing the waxworks. And, and both, both those things, getting jobs in the applied arts, doing scenic stuff, was really useful, as well as, as, well as you know, a means of funding our own sculpture practice. It was useful to learn those skills on the job.